position. <laughs> I saw it up so many times this weekend. I figured there couldn't be another question that you that we didn't answer. <laughs> All right. Okay. Anyway, let's move on. And there's uh there's uh we see Adam with Chuck Norris too. Okay, I see. Okay, let me let a few more people. Bob, can you let people in there? I am. They are hopping on, sir, as they okay. join. While we're waiting for everybody to get on, I, I just kind of wanted to, Master Oliver wanted me to get a little feedback here from everybody and uh, see what what is real helpful for everybody, because here's what's going to happen. I want each of you to tell me what your biggest takeaway was. But if somebody else says it, before it comes to you, then you got to come up with the next biggest takeaway. Okay. So I'll We're let you first, unmute though. yourself. Jason already did. <laughs> going first. So what was your biggest takeaway, Jason? The biggest takeaway is we're, we're upping our leadership crisis. Um, we went out to dinner with Jan, uh, Tim Harrison, and uh, Paul Hilton, um, and a few other people too. And between Jan, Paul, and Tim, they all convinced me I need to raise our prices on leadership. Um, and of course, you know, everybody else in the group has been saying that, but that, that was a huge thing. A lot of other things, but I'll let other people say other stuff. That was one. Okay. So a leadership price, and, or let's and just what, say pricing in general, because we did talk about basic students too. Yeah. And we, uh, we would mention for everybody in the group, make sure that leadership pricing can be about double what your basic is. And is that what you're going to raise it up to Jason? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to go up to about 600 from 350 from basic. So close to double, very close to that. Yeah, and that, that's your price you get, not the white yes. scholarship price. Correct. So Correct. on your pricing sheet or what you write down, it's got to show significantly, yeah, well, or even higher, higher. because then the, then the drop down mm -hmm. price to what you're showing them is significant. So usually a couple hundred dollars less from your scholarship, from your regular price to your scholarship price. So, so, be, so. be careful about that. As well, yeah. So and it's going to charge six hundred dollars. I'll, I'll yeah. caution you on your renewal too. Uh, what happens for some schools is they raise the price, but they didn't prep and pre-frame the students right, and then they get a lot of pushback. So just make sure. And we talked about it at the meeting about the reframing versus pre-framing and and the difference. Uh, yes, so whoever wants to go next, uh, next unmute. And if you, uh, if you speak first, you get to go some first. creative marketing ideas, like simple things that you could do that just will grab people's attention. And that was at lunch with Paul. He had some just fantastic little tips to, to make things easier in that guys. And I tell you, I hear that all the time, guys, that that's why don't just go to lunch and then crack jokes and, and talk, uh, you know, what's going on in the world. Uh, you know, that's time to enter, interchange some business ideas too, because uh, sometimes I hear people's getting some, you know, some of the best uh, information, uh, uh, you know, from a different source, uh, you know, when they're at lunch or something. So, so good point. Okay. Uh, now, if somebody else got something from lunch with somebody, they can use that too, but he did use the, uh, the one about the uh, special marketing, the extra marketing ideas. Uh, just unmute yourself because I'm going to ask everybody that's on this meeting is going to be talking today. I'll go next. Go ahead. Uh, the guarantee to be a black belt. Um, that's definitely something we're going to be using and talking about with our students. Uh, say they want to be a black belt, write it down, uh, train like a black belt and don't quit. Okay, and remember the way to say it is not how you said it. How are you supposed to say it? Uh, that's what I wrote down. I thought that's what you said. Remember, no, I think I said something like this, didn't I? Tell them, Jason. So the four things, the first thing is you wanna be-, be but, but, but say step. it again. So there's four steps to becoming a black belt. If you want to become a black belt, I can guarantee, see, see how I emphasize the guarantee? If you want to be a black belt, I can guarantee you that you will make it if you do these four things. See, we want to make it about the four things. And we want to make it about the guarantee, right? Now, how can I guarantee anybody to be a black belt? 
Well, I can guarantee it because of the things I said. What did I say? Set your goal with to a date, right? Now I'm not putting them in order because I'm getting to the last one. That last one was, remember, they set that date and they don't quit. Well, I didn't say it was going to take them three years, four years, five years, hell, 10 years. But if they don't quit, they will get that black belt. That's the thing that's positive. Uh, so you can guarantee that. Now, I don't emphasize that they can take five or 10 years. I'm still going to do it. I'm just going to pretend that it's the normal. You know, I'm just saying on the norm, but I'm just saying I can guarantee anybody to become a black belt if they don't quit because eventually they'll get it. Okay, remember, uh, and, and Chris, you came in just a few minutes late. I don't know if you heard, maybe Delfino didn't hear either. Everybody, I'm gonna call on everybody today at the beginning of the meeting to give me the one thing, their biggest takeaway, and uh, you can't use one somebody else uses. Yes, so, one. And Miss Davis got her hand up. <laughs> Um, I think the big, I, a lot, but my favorite part was the difference between um, conflict, violence, and self-defense. Excellent. And bullying, Master I guess. Moody? That was Master Moody's uh, conflict avoidance thing. How many, how many, uh, how, many, Not avoidance. how many wrote down some good stuff for that to be able to utilize? Good, good. Yeah, remember that. Remember, just so everybody's clear on the terminology, is conflict resolution, not avoidance. Avoidance would be <laughs> avoidance would be the conflict happens and I de-escalate or reduce it or leave. So that's fight, fight, flight, or freeze. Re resolution is I'm getting through it to resolve it. So, so you hear that terminology a lot, and and, and most of the time people are really just teaching avoidance when they talk about resolution. So that so when everybody's hearing somebody teach stuff, it's very much like bullying prevention. Most of the bullying prevention work is not really prevention. It's just, you know, it, it's not very, very correct in how they're, they're re resolving it. So again, look through those uh, seminars to learn about it. Okay. Who's next? Unmute yourself. Sure, I'll, I'll go. go ahead. Um, and certainly difficult to choose any one thing, but uh, I'm going to go with something you said <clears throat> when uh, Grandmaster Oliver asked you, what would you do if you wanted to sign 50 students this month? And you said, I would go to my calendar, see what we're supposed to be doing for internal, external, and online marketing. And I make sure that I organize my weapons for all three, just like weapons, you know, you need weapons uh, for as a martial artist to target the body, the heads, and the legs. Uh, and then you also said, and I focus only on the areas that matter, which are marketing, intros, enrollments, renewals, and retention. Very good. Very good. And that was at our Sunday meeting? That was actually at the, uh, when we were all outside doing the marketing bit. Oh, on the oh, yeah. oh, that's right. When you, Master Oliver split y'all up. That's right. Yes, sir. Okay. Who's next? I'll go next. Okay, Delfina. I really liked when you all called the uh, million dollar schools up front and um, they were giving us what they're doing, but also hearing what they've gone through and are going through, because some of what they were describing is what we're going through right now. And it just emphasizes, you know, there's no excuses, you know, the household income can't be an excuse, uh, you know, uh, well, anything, nothing can be an excuse. And just seeing them being out there and explaining, you know, what they did to overcome those, it kind of motivated me knowing that we're kind of in the right path and we're going through the same struggles that they have gone or are going through. So that I, I really enjoyed. Good. And it was an excellent point that you made, Delfino, is that, you know, a lot of people think, oh, wow, if you're doing over 80,000, you have no problems. It's all just, uh, you know, easy sailing. You know, take your foot off the pedal, coast on in, use cruise control. No, I'm going to tell you, Jan and Tim and Paul and all the guys that, uh, that have, uh, are trying to keep those grosses up over 100, they have just as much work to do or more, and they're they're always running into to problems just like you. It's just happier problems, you know? Uh, I always like it when uh, 
my problem, you know, like I told Tim, he was so pissed off that he did 93,000 uh, and uh, uh, one month. And I said, Paul, listen to you. I mean, Tim, listen to you. I said, uh, four years ago, if I would have told you, you're going to be up to nine, you know, you're going to get up to 93. This is when he was doing it in the 50s. I said, well, you know what, Paul? I, I just took a look in the future, uh, Tim. And you've got a $93,000 a month you're going to have. And guess what? How happy are you going to be? And he said, oh, I would be tickle peak. I would be jumping up and down and I'd be taking. I said, no, you were complaining to everybody and you were pissed off and you were wondering what they did, why, what they did wrong. And, and they said, no, no, that's impossible. You see, so just, just keep everything in perspective. You know, you, you've got problems is you just got to have more solutions than you have problems and that'll keep you moving forward. Okay, unmute, who's ever next? I'll take this, sir. Go ahead. All right, so um, two things. One would be just the stuff that went over. You can only you use show. one. Oh, okay, okay. Because everybody's got to have one. I don't want to run the bucket. <laughs> yes, sir, yes, sir. So, all right. So if I'm going to pick one, it's really the one that you think that hasn't been said, that was your next best thing to take away. Yes, sir. It would be not cherry picking. It's, <laughs> you know, doing everything that we're supposed to, not just doing things that we feel like are easy to get done or things that we feel, yeah, we'd like to do that. Everything's on the table and we have to really start hitting everything on our path and on list. So. I think that would be the biggest takeaway for us overall. I love that. I love that because I'm going to tell you, it's such a common problem with new members. But, uh, you know, there's even people that have been with us that might not get a, be getting enough traction yet and they can't figure it out and they get frustrated. And then they start, we start doing the checklist of what they should be doing. And they go, well, I didn't do that because it didn't work one time. And then this, I, when did you do that? Well, I did that a couple of years ago and it, you know, no, keep doing all of the systems and then track your results so we can see what the problem is. See, your stats will tell you what the problem is. Yes, and then it's a lot easier to, to solve. Okay, unmute next. Uh, Grandmaster Oliver, I would say finally mastering the idea of how to do the stripes. You know, we've talked about it in videos. I've seen you hundreds of times since then. But now the way you made it might easier. Now, heads up too. Guys, I got a cricket machine for Christmas. I make my own stripes now with this machine. I make my own signs with it. I've saved, th <laughs> saved thousands. Okay, now, now we know where to order them. Oh, yeah, I'll make them cheap because you get a roll like that. You make yourself <laughs> like this all day. But uh, my thing is also a Grandmaster Oliver and Grandmaster Moody in the lobby helped me deal with a uh, mom that's hoping to you know, prevent versus, you know, the, the cure of deal with the mom, like give the kid two uniforms, give him two shoes, hope that'll stop him from not showing up with that stuff. So that, both those tips were going to save me a lot of time and eggs. Okay, good. And, and, and keep that in mind, guys. <clears throat> Don't always, uh, you know, I, I end up, somebody asks me a question and rather than something that happens all the time, it's something that's happened like once in a lifetime. They always want to find that one far out you know it reminds me of when i first started taking martial arts and uh my friends would go well what would you do if somebody got you in this hold how would you get out of that and then i would say to them okay well get me in that hold and then they go to do it and i punch them and they go like what what'd you do that for i said well who's gonna be stupid enough to let you walk up if you let somebody if you're stupid enough to let somebody walk up and put you in that hole you deserve not to get out <laughs> but don't always ask the one question and master moody and master oliver and i we run into this so many you guys have heard it too where somebody will come up with the one question and you went wow where the hell did that come from i i've been doing this for 30 years and i never heard that problem but but you want the solution to it my solution to it is we don't enroll everybody and we don't renew everybody and he's one of the ones we're not going to renew <laughs> if it's too obscure. Now, if it is one of the simple ones, we can do it. Okay. Who's unmuting next? Or do I I'll have give it a shot. Okay. I'll give it a shot. 
Okay. Uh, so this was actually something um, I'm probably going to butcher it, uh, but it's from Master Moody, uh, and it was awesome, and I'll uh, I won't forget it. But it was something to the effect of wait, if you don't have minute. any, that's that's exceptional. Let's give that. Let's give him a hand. It was from Master Moody, and it was <laughs> exceptional. No wonder you awesome. remembered it. Let's give him a hand. <laughs> it was uh, basically a philosophy of uh, if you don't have any intros to teach, then you should be spending that time booking intros and, and prospecting and utilize that time. Something to that effect. I'm sorry if I'm doing saying it wrong. Yeah, if you don't have an appointment, you should be setting an appointment. Yes. That And I tell you, that runs so true. Um, and... And you expanded a little farther, Chris, because you said if you don't have any intros, then be schedule them. Well, that's the same thing. If if he's asking his his staff in the daytime, how many appointments do we have? They don't have any. Then he said, well, how could that be possible? Because you knew you didn't have any when you came in the school. How come you didn't start working on getting some, right? Yes, sir. We actually have a it's a silly we have a silly list for our junior staff. That's a, a list of what to do when there's nothing to do. And it's got stuff like, um, you know, arranging the chairs and being uh, at the front door and giving high fives, welcoming people when they come, saying goodbye to people when they leave. Um, you know, just like the, the the extra stuff when there's no assistance needed on the floor. So awesome. yesterday, I yesterday I said this, something similar to uh, my program director who says, hey, how many appointments do you have today? And we only had like one or two. I was like, great. So we need to create a list of what to do when there are no appointments. Like specifically, what prospecting, what parents you're going to speak to that are on the PTOs. Um, what calls are you going to make? Uh, reach out to anybody that was uh, in our contact list from the last six months. But we need to make a list of what to do when there's nothing to do. Great, great. I like it. I like it. Okay, uh, number next. And and Matt, you came in a little late. I don't know if you heard what we were doing here. Everybody mm -hmm. that was at the meeting that's on our meeting today is going to give give me what their best. Uh, takeaway is but they can't use one that somebody else has already used okay it has to be the best takeaway that nobody said yet has anyone said to raise their prices yet yes ah uh, okay so then the other big thing that i got was constantly be marketing and then if that's it you know one of the big things i got was talk to the parents continuously even if you gotta let the little kid you know run the class for two seconds Talk to the parents, see what's going on, see if there's anything you can do to, you know, kind of help or get karate in there somehow, whether it's Girl Scouts, Cub Scouts. You know, I actually had a little girl when they said that, that I kind of went like the doy with because I have a little girl here. She just made her own video to sell all these Girl Scout cookies. You know, she made, wow. you know, I showed her how to make a QR code and she, you know, took that knowledge, put it on her flyers that she hands out. Wow. And I didn't think to use that at all. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. That that was perfect. And Paul Helston hit on that too, if you recall, Matt, where he had suggested actually, and, and this kind of uh, lies into what Chris was alluding to with his staff members, getting to know your uh, your parents and what they're involved with and you know how you might be able to engage those other opportunities or find opportunities to actually uh, participate okay. in. Great. Okay, I'm gonna start calling on people now. Okay, Miss Yana. Oh, wait, I got one. <laughs> Uh, I think I think something that was important was asking for the reviews when you are doing renewals or upgrades. So just being sensitive to when people want to tell you how great you are, and then using that as 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 leverage to say, "Here's the QR code. Please write me a world class review." Great. And I tell you, and I think Chris, I think you asked that question uh, on one of your your uh, Facebook posts about uh, how to get the testimonials and things like that. Uh, yes, sir. We'll, we'll talk about that in, in the meeting today. We'll go over some of your questions, okay? Great, thank you. Okay, and uh, I have, oh, I have. Go ahead. So, so yeah. um, with uh, Master Moody, I liked with the um, overcoming the objections and, you know, the five qualifying, uh, you know, to clarify my thinking, you know, going through the five questions um, just to, you know, say, all right, well, you know, since all of this is, you know, pretty much all, since this is all good, you know, let's, let's get started and just, you know, going through everything and um, the role playing and just getting it down. I think that's, you know, was one of the big takeaways that I got. Um, I'm so glad you brought that up. I, I can't believe we got all the way to you and nobody said that because <laughs> overcoming those objections, but I, I really like myself. I like the way that he let y'all divide up and role play it where you set it back and forth to each other and you kept changing around. See, that's, that's how you have to be doing your 
training in your school with your staff is you've got to role play and you've got to, you know, play off of each other. Sometimes it gets a little silly and you make, you know, things, but that's okay. It's still get overcoming the objections or, or going through that verbally. So yeah, I agree with you. Thanks a lot for bringing that up. Okay. Yes, Who have we not heard from. So mine was kind of the flip side of that, the part of practice with no objections until you have it down so good that you, you don't get stumped like that. Sometimes we throw the objections in too early before we really know the script. So practice without the objection, practice without the objection, practice without the objection until you've got it solid. You know, I, I always tell I always tell the staff, you got to do it so much that it doesn't matter how many questions they ask you, how many objections they come to you've got the answer for every one of them. There's nothing they can give you except they're broke. We can't fix broke. Now, we do have ways that we can help them with that by asking grandma and, you know, and uh, maybe go into their savings or things like that. But, you know, we can help them try to, to uh, uh, you know, find how to do it financially. Uh, okay, Miss Amanda. Um, besides all the other things everybody said, which were great, it was a lot um, of I, one of the takeaways I had is I do, I feel like I was keeping pretty good stats, but one thing I, I don't really know is the breakdown of, uh, the, the gross in terms of what's coming from basics, what's coming from leadership, what's coming from the master's program. So, uh, kind of knowing that number and then being able to set, uh, goals based on just a little bit more specific numbers besides just the overall gross very very good very good observation and guys remember if you want to get your gross up you have to uh, I, I tell everybody it's the faucet you have to know which to turn well if i go look in that bucket and it's half empty and that bucket's full then i know that one's working but that one's not right so if I know how much am I getting from my basic, how much am I getting from my 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 uh, black belt, how much I get from the leadership, or you can even put black belt leadership together. I don't care, you know. But when you know where those where that money's coming from, then you can go to that source to increase it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, Green Master Smith, I'd like to uh, jump in there if that's uh, it's all right. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if anybody's uh, mentioned this yet. Uh, we kind of jumped in a little bit late, but uh, maximizing the use of our internal marketing. So um, I know it was one of the takeaways that uh, I was in on a Saturday, but when we think about internal marketing, we're thinking about you know the students that are already coming in through the door and utilizing it through you know doing buddy days or you know doing these family nights and everything, bringing in you know potential new, you know, students right through the door and then really maximizing on that opportunity. That's absolutely, uh, you know, why do we do the Parthenon of marketing? Because we know that if we hit all three of those areas, then we have a better chance of hitting a home run somewhere. We have a better chance, uh, you, you know, what's the expression? You throw enough mud against the wall, some of it will stick and maybe it wasn't mud. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but the idea is to, to do so much that even if you're you're not as good at it yet, you know, somebody asked me, uh, how do I get more leads? And I said, <clears throat> well, it's pretty simple. We gave you three areas to fill up your bucket, internal, external, and internet. And we did three hours of videos on it where I put about 50 or 60 things between me and Master Oliver on what some of that stuff is. So go there and write it down. And if you don't know how to do it, then put a star. If you know how to do it, highlight it. And everything that's highlighted, put it on the calendar. See, it has to go from when you highlight it, it has to go to a date. Otherwise, it's just a wish it's like our students saying you can't just say i want to be a black belt you got to put it in writing well you're going to put it in writing when you put it on the calendar and commit it to a date so when you look at your marketing calendar and i mean a real calendar not just write them down but on a real calendar because i can see if my calendar's full 
you know, I always like to go to um, Mr. Harrison's school in Juliet because uh, their marketing calendars are filled up pretty good each month. You know, last year they averaged 24 enrollments uh, a month. But the year before, uh, Karis, if, if my memory is correct, I think it was even 25 or 26 the year before. I think it was one or two more even. But uh, that means that uh, they didn't do less, have to do less marketing. They did, they kept the marketing strong. And uh, if you saw all the things they were doing, internal, external, and internet stuff, then you would understand how they got 24. But once you get your numbers on your leads, then there's only two ways to get more enrollments. You've got to get better at making the conversions down the list till you get, in other words, I have to have enough of those leads make an appointment and I have to have enough of those appointments to come to the first. I have to have enough of those first to come back to the second. And then I better be given every one of those that take a second an enrollment conference. Some of the schools, we found that their biggest drop off in that was because they uh, weren't doing a conference. And they said, well, they didn't show up. And I said, what do you mean? They came to the second. Every second should have an enrollment conference. So uh, then somebody, and you guys heard us talk about it at the meeting that was so important. It was about the renewal conferences. How many are you tracking? Do, am I tracking how many renewal conferences I have? And then is it I need more conferences or is it need I need to get better at the conference because I talked to a lot, but my percentage was real low or my percentage was low because I had them in the pipeline, but I never asked them or I didn't prep or pre-frame or reframe them enough that when they got in the office, they were sold because the biggest objection is what when they're in that conference, when they hear the price. So we have to have that buying temperature up so high then that price is not going to matter. See, price only matters when they don't think it's worth it. You want the value so good that when they hear the price, and I, I know I heard a couple of schools say this before when they did a conference, when, when the parents actually said, is that all? Then you know you're really given value. And, that, and that's what you really got to get to. Okay, uh, who else did I miss that was there? Jan, uh, we missed Jan, there she is. Uh, Jan, we were playing a little game here. It was, what was your biggest takeaway uh, from the meeting? And you can't use one that somebody else said because everybody else is gone. Yes, I mean. Great. Um, so we'll guess, we'll, you'll, we'll, if you say what somebody else said, then we'll, we'll buzz you. <laughs> All right, I may get buzzed because I just got on, so I didn't hear, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, okay, maybe, maybe you got one that nobody okay. had. So one of the things um, that we're going to do, which is what I do at least once a year when I go to your meetings, is I raise my rates. So I'm raising my leader's rates. Did someone already say that one? Jason was our first one to jump in, and, and he got the idea from you, too. He said. Okay. <laughs> so that's one thing I'm going to do. Um, I, got some, I got some ideas. I really like Paul's presentation on um, the buddy day that he did the buddy week that he did and putting um, like a competition thing on the wall where the people write their name down and they get stars or they get uh, raffle tickets and stuff. So we do buddy day and, and all that kind of stuff, but he added a few tweaks that I really liked that we're going to add. That's going to make a difference. Um, I really liked, and I think what my people got out of it and what I wanted them to get out of it was the stuff that you always give about, about, highlighting black belt, highlighting people, complimenting people, show them the social proof, um, show them who they're going to become. And so I really like the part that you said about the four things that can pretty much guarantee a black belt. If you do da, 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 you will get your black belt. You just have to stay. You have to train. You have to write it down. I don't know if someone said that already. That we did. We talked about that because uh, what we want to make clear is don't say I can almost guarantee you're going to have to sound more convincing. So what I, I can say is, guarantee. <laughs> how many would like to be a black belt someday? 
And then I say to myself, what if I could tell you four things that if you did them, you would be a black belt someday? How many would do it? And then I see these hands and I said, okay, let's see. Let's, here's the four things. And then here's the first one. Here's, and then go through the four. See, the whole thing is to let them know that they're capable, that I can guarantee there'll be a black belt someday if you do these four things. So right. uh, just be real confident when you say it and make it matter of factly. And here's our secret formula. And uh, I'm going to share it with this class. Don't tell everybody else. This is just because for you guys, this is special black belt master knowledge that I'm going to share with you today. So keep it to yourselves today. You know, make a joke out of it, right? Okay. Thank you, Jan. You're welcome. Okay. Anybody else we missed? Let's give Jan extra credit because she's raising leadership prices, though, because Jan, that's been a while to do that. And I appreciate you having the confidence to do that. Well, you know what was good is we started with that, with Jason raising his leadership yeah. prices. He was the first one and then Jan was the last one and she's doing it. So yeah, and, everybody and in between, you better do yeah, that too. Yeah, we realize that's hard for you guys to do. Um, and, but it's it's something that those of you guys who you know take the, you know, the guts to do it, you're going to get a lot of success it's not just about you guys making more money it really will improve your retention and improve a lot of things internally in your school uh when you when you do that even more jan just like you said that black belt verbiage you guys if you have your school that looks and says you're a black belt i mean look at chris uh the chris's background right there where he is now, I know he's not at his school, but let's say that it's, that's his school behind him. If your school wall is that blank, then you ain't saying you're a black belt school. you got to utilize all the, the wall space. I mean, look behind Karis. Karis, raise your hand over there where they see you. Look at all that signage right there. That's right behind the front desk when you walk in. And, and it continues all the way around the school, signs hanging down. Uh, go the other way. Yeah, look at all those signs. You have to duck under them almost that talks about leaders and, uh, and all the signage they have up. See, that's what makes your renewal half as easy. I mean, it, it, it's almost a lay down if they come in and they're excited. You know, the other half is taking them through that renewal process, right? But if I haven't prepped them and pre-framed them, and if I haven't said all those, every sign that's on your that's on your wall, you should have asked that at least 10 times per cycle, asking the class, what does that mean, class? See that sign right here, guys? I said, has everybody seen all our black belt verbiage signs? And they, they don't even know what that is, so I have to explain them. I said, these are the signs to remind you of what, what it takes and what it's like to be a black belt. See, that one, a black belt is a white belt that never quit. What does that mean? Well, we know that you know what it means, but why do I want them to say it? Because if they say it back to me, it's going to be ingrained in their subconscious more. See, it's all about don't quit right? We've got to get that, that across. We also got to get across the set goals. We've got to get across to uh, uh, just do it, you know, quit waiting. We got to, we got to instill all of those black belt habits into them where their subliminal messages in your school that when they're around them constantly, it helps them stick with it and not quit. But you've got to sometimes call their attention to all that signage. And, uh, and I think that makes a, a lot. Master Moody, what you got? About agreeing with you, sir? No, no sir. I agree. No, I was uh, about your things, what you got for them. Well, I, I, I want to call words of wisdom. <laughs> okay uh well you you uh you got me uh at the end of all that guys what other things i just want to know what other things you guys got out of the uh 
the event. I you saw you didn't get to go, but you sent Matthew. So, I, uh, what other action plans do you guys have from the uh, the event that you really are excited about that are going to make a big difference in the next few? Well, Matthew, Matthew came back really fired up. Uh, I pretty much got play by plays the whole weekend, which was a lot of fun for me to see him uh, really focusing in on, on the business. Having said that, the, the first thing uh, he got from it was the, us giving getting them to give us a review on the spot post extension and uh, renewal. Next, of course, is raise the prices. We came up with the following uh, I mean, if you want to know, you know, this is before discounts, $1,000 uh, deposit, $597 a month for basic, and then uh, first day enrollment special, $500 and $397. Then the renewal will be $1,497 deposit, $797 down. And uh, after the loyalty or scholarship, $797 deposit, $597 a month. And then we, we're going to add uh middle middle program 695 697 deposit 497 yeah and i guess my observation from that's good uh and that's congruent with what we talked about my observation from the meeting and some of you guys were in the marketing breakout instead of being in with the uh the rest of the group uh during that time with because some of you guys were with master oliver one of the things i think the lesson was even the guys that were in the million dollar schools that were talking about what their what what their suggestions were for everybody else we had some things that that you guys could do and some things that would turn uh some of you from like 1.5 million dollar operation to a 2.5 million dollar operation and a lot of that was uh either uh increase the price at the renewal level which Jan, you're you're doing it, Jason. You you said that was the the takeaway there. And what was? But I think the big message there wasn't so much that you needed to increase your price because we keep telling you guys that. But the other piece, Jan, I think you spoke on really really well was that the data shows that that effect of increasing your price was either to neutral on conversion rate or it increased the conversion rate. Would would you agree with that, Jan? Yes, for us, it, that's the way it's been. And I hear from everyone else the same thing. Yeah, and that's important to get for everybody to kind of embed in their brain a little bit here, because some of you guys are still struggling with, should I increase the price or not? And Master Oliver, Master Smith, Master Moody have been telling us, increase your price, increase your price, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, there's some fear about that. And, and, and the data shows in pretty much every case that increasing the price, the effect is that you still do as many enrollments and you still do as many renewals in all the cases. The only, the only time it doesn't is when you personally freak out about it. So given that that's true, there's no real good reason you have. The What we end up with this two categories of reasoning why you hold back. <laughs> One category is I'm afraid of the reaction from my prospective students. Um, and again, the data doesn't support that. The data doesn't support that that ever is a problem. You're still going to have people bitching about money, whether it's $50 a month or whether it's $500 a month. Still have people bitching about money. You still have people saying, I got to think about it, which is a more common objection. And we went through training on that. You're still going to have those kind of objections. The data doesn't support those fears. So that's an important thing. Jan, you said it so well. I just wanted to repeat it because that, that was uh, hopefully what everybody got as a takeaway from that. But the second thing is for you guys in this group, a lot of you have staff and you have the concern that the staff is going to uh object to you raising the prices and that's the second one that i think is the fear if i raise the prices or if i change the system the staff is going to you know mutiny on me and they're going to be upset about it and there's there's two answers i i would want to have and i'd like to make sure everybody gets all their fears dispelled today about that what do i do to make sure the staff is okay with raising the prices one is that um, 
the idea that if I if I move the prices up a little bit at a time, it'll be easier on the staff. And the problem with that concept is, is that all it, I, I compare it to, there's two ways to chop off your arm. You can do it an inch at a time, or you can do it at the shoulder. And for a lot of you, if you move your price up a little bit at a time, what you're doing is causing more trauma with your staff and more trauma with yourself over time and time and time and time. And uh, not to keep using Jan as an example, but you're the one that we did the math with. What do we figure out you lost by waiting to raise the prices? Over 5 million. Yeah, about $5 million. <laughs> it was 5.8 million. Five point eight. Quiet. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's not just that's five point eight million of net income. Now, some of that could have gone to the staff, by the way, Lionel. <laughs> net income, net income to Jan and the staff. Five point eight million dollars. So think about let that sit in for a minute. Raising the price a little bit at a time, Amanda Olson. Think about you too. Raising the price a little bit of the, and a lot of you guys, raising the price a little bit at a time is all net income you've lost. So if you, whatever price we're suggesting, if you just went to that price, it's all lost income and it's no less stress on your staff doing that one jump than doing it a little bit at a time. The, the only thing that I would caution them on, Master Moody, is that when we have uh, uh, somebody who's who has a bunch of students that were on your old pricing on a basic program, and then you've got your basic is is almost doubled, and now you're going to not just double somebody. So you got to keep them. If you do have a bunch that are on your old pricing system on a basic, just keep it under that that limit of uh, fifty percent bump or a hundred percent. Yeah, Yeah, that, I mean, that's a really good point. It should be proportionally. So nobody's yeah. saying, you know, if you if your basic used to be a hundred bucks and you're new with us, and your leadership is going to be eight hundred bucks, you don't bump them to eight hundred bucks. You you keep it proportional. So so don't get confused about that. That's a really good point, Master Smith. And those proportions. Remember that proportion will will work or not work based on how much you've pre-framed how much you've reframed them before they go through that that uh, enrollment that renewal procedure you know when you put them at what we call in the pipeline when you when you are gonna actually take them through a few uh, trial leadership classes and then close them i try to uh uh and i know probably everybody's here has had that one or two parents that slipped through the crack and you they didn't get pre-framed and then you you think you're going to renew them because everybody else has been renewing and then they get all hostile and they want to cancel their program and they're going to chew you out because they think you pulled one on over on them well that's only the person that has not been pre-framed properly that's why in that renewal process of doing that little trial renewal uh what i call it the trial renewal intro i try to find out whether i'm even going to give them the numbers i don't talk to everybody if i don't feel the commitment there i'll tell them i say well remember this was a trial basis we wanted to make sure this was a good fit for you uh, it doesn't appear by the way you've uh, uh, you've been going here that this is a good fit. Is there a, an issue that we need to address? Because what that means is when I got that goal setting sheet that I've given them in the popcorn bucket, when I have the that that papers track that I'm giving them, if they're not answering them the right way, then I've got to stop there and solve that issue before I go on forward. Don't just keep pushing them forward and then give them the numbers if they've already said on that goal setting that they haven't even set their goal for Black Belt or they don't know if he's going to do it. Uh, he's got other activities, you know, and you'll get some uh, sheets like that. So make sure you're looking at those things and you're interpreting them uh, the right way. Does that make sense, guys? 
Right. And and that's that's about the process. I'm interested in though, any concerns or questions you guys have about those two pieces, upping the price in a jump. But even even if you do that, then you're the, the other people that are at lower price points, you can always if your price sheet said nine hundred dollars for leadership, that person can still, if they were a hundred dollars for basic, their scholarship just is bigger than. So then maybe they pay $200 for leadership because if you were just starting with this, for example, but the, it doesn't mean you have a different price sheet that still shows, you know, it's $900 for leadership or whatever it might be. Um, I'm using a larger number, but it would be still apply. Um, Ready? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, can some of the folks that have done, you know, a significant price increase uh, kind of talk about what they did? That went right and what they did they wish they had done better and just to kind of give everybody a sense of how that goes who do we have on here that's uh done a significant price increase and what went what was there a big a big problem with the price increase Jason, and didn't you recently well, two this was a while back we were at 275 for basic and we jumped up to 350. Right. Um, so somewhat, but the, and that story, some of you guys have heard, um, I had printed out a sheet because Master Moody was telling us, you know, uh, practice like big. So you get used to it. And so my, my ultimate goal was getting, and this was a while back and now that old book will change was getting up to 350 a month. So I had printed out on a sheet, you know, this is what the price is. And I used that to practice with my staff, but then I of course didn't show anybody. And the other sheets that I had printed up was the 275 or whatever it is. Right. Um, and I, I got out that sheet on accident and I'm going through the prices and I laid the sheet down and I froze because I realized, wait, that's the 350 one that he's seeing. And the guy starts laughing and he's like, oh, Jason, you, you need to, I, I can tell you don't like asking for money, but man, this program is amazing. It's worth every penny. And I was uh, like, oh, okay, we're doing 350 a month. No problem. Right. Um, so that that's, I remember for us for basic how, how that changed. And now we, I, I'm hearing this and yeah, I need to do this for leadership. So yeah. Yeah. So at that point, at that point, you didn't have a problem. Yeah. Anybody bump their leadership price up significantly? It's kind of that's a that's a good one, Jason. Uh, that was so that was accidental and it was no problem. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, anybody bump their leadership rate up significantly and um, uh, in in you know what their experience was? We did yeah. years ago. Um, years ago when I first bumped it, cause it had been like a $50 bump or something. It was nothing. And when we bumped it big, never had any problems. Wasn't any different. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I like that story. Master Oliver tells about the guy that up bumped it four times and started freaking out because people were bitching about money. And then when he did the data, the rate went up, the actual rate went up and very common experience. You know, that, that when you bump it, you'll start being more sensitive personally, psychologically. But in reality, when you look at the numbers, and, and that's why we keep telling you we don't want to get into stats now. But w when you when you keep track of things, then you go, oh, well, when you look at the numbers, that's what helps you keep calm about it. The numbers reflect that everything's OK. You know, and usually the experience will be that the data, as we've talked about, doesn't support that there's any problem. People restrict, uh, I'll read something to you um, to, that might go along with that, you know, in terms of what people's reaction is. Um, I, I just got something from Dan Kennedy, uh, his, his regular newsletter about urgency, you know, like why people need to buy. That's why you do the white belt scholarship or you do the uh, discount when they enroll that day. Um, this is what was just from a newsletter from him. People put off buying if they can, even when they need and or want what is being sold. It's such ingrained behavior trying to psychoanalyze it, it's unproductive. Procrastination is a way of life. I'll wait and think it over is reflexive. People live in a town called Think It Over Iowa with one intersection and one traffic light and with all three lights on it yellow. Any offer that does not have inside it and wrapped around it reasons to act now that are strong enough to cause the person to crash the caution light, step on the gas, and drive through the intersection against the yellow lights warnings is a handicapped offer, like a man on crutches competing in a race with unimpaired runners. So I don't know if you got all that because I read it pretty fast, but you know it's like that. If 
people always are going to have, I want to wait on something or I want to think about it. And yet we assign that a lot of times because we're worried about money to there's a money objection. And instead, most of the time when you're having talking about renewals or enrollments, people say, ah, I got to go home and think about it, or I got to check the budget, or that's a lot of money. I got to decide. On it. And usually it's couched in a delayed object in a delay objection or procrastination objection. So anyway, to, did Amanda, did that answer your question? You want to hear from somebody else? A lot of people, uh, I think a lot of you guys probably bumped your price up slowly, like I'm not suggesting, but go ahead. Anybody else have an experience of I, I'm I'm actually um the way that that we did it, uh, Master Moody, is you have to realize if you have a school that was really low and you try to make it really high, then it does cause an upheaval if your program doesn't back it up. If you don't have the people that are super excited about the value. That's why I've always used the pricing where, what do you want to be and where are you at? And let's just say for numbers, so I don't have to make anybody commit themselves here. Let's just say uh, your leadership, I mean, your basic is $300. So if it's 300, I'm saying it's 297. And that means the regular price is 347. And then we, because you came in from such and such or our special one, it's only 297 if you finalize your paperwork today, right? So what happens is you get comfortable saying that 347 is your regular price. And then as soon as you're comfortable with that, whether it's three months, whether it's six months, then you start charging 347 and you say the regular price is 397. Because on a basic program, you really don't have to be higher than 350. If you're at 347, then you've got a good bump up to your leadership. But if you were at 197, it's hard to get up to $500 on a, on a leadership jumping from one to the other. If you're at 247, to go to 497 is not that big a deal. 297, 497, but maybe you had to say to get to 497 because you haven't done it before and you were nervous. You say the regular price is 497, but this month we're doing, uh, we're, we're grandfathering in all our, our members that haven't been on our leadership program and we're gonna do 447, but after next month, it's gonna be 497. So I can do that little trial for one month to get them to do it this month. And it's going to be this price because the regular price is going to be 497 next month. And when I then make it 497, I'm going to say the regular price is 547. And then when I want to bump it to 547, if that's double of what my basic is, then I'm going to be more comfortable with it. Now, going up 47, you know, that that bump, that $50 bump. I don't think that's cutting your arm off if you're charging 297 now. You know what I mean? If you're charging 197, then to get up to the those bigger numbers, it's hard. But even at 197, 400, 397 is no problem. Because you're doing it proportion with what they did. So the thing to remember, because uh, I had one school that had some problems because they raised the price, but the person they were charging, they were only paying like 187 or something before when they, because they had been there for a while. And now they were trying to get them on a 497 or something. So, you know, as long as you do it proportionately with what they are, and if you got cold feet about it, then use that little $50 kicker for one or two months on renewals, I'd say you got to do it this month. So it's only one month. On your basic, you can take it for a few months till you're comfortable with it. Yeah, of course, you guys can always do what you're comfortable with. Um, but understand that be, you know, if you, some of you guys are stuck at, at, at the rate that you're, you've been charging for a long time. And there's a, there's a cost there. Um, as far as your staff, though, if you're managing staff and they're you know, you're worried about the pushback. 
that really is a lack of leadership. And, it, you know, I, I, I know that maybe not feel good when I say that, but there has to be a culture in your school so that when the pricing changes or whatever system you have in your school changes, that there's two pieces of that administrating that one is is that there's a the culture is that the systems that we have are the systems that we have and our expectation is that you run them the other piece is that we're going to do a lot of practice and practice and practice and practice and one thing i wanted to point out that uh i think um uh mrs del castillo you got you pointed this out a minute ago i believe that one of the takeaways you had was that you, when you train, you want to train as if everything goes fine. And we want to emphasize that a lot because when we train on especially sales or anything that you're nervous about, uh, you want to train as if the nervous thing doesn't happen. Because when you train, if the nervous thing happens a lot, then you get too sensitized to it. No, so in other words, we're, we might agree that we're that a lot of the staff members, especially new one, might be sensitized to somebody saying no and rejecting you when you're selling. And the way to train for the sales is to first train as if everybody says yes, a lot. And so you ask for the money, you practice it as if everybody says yes, a lot, and go through that sales process a lot. So that that becomes 90% of what you practice. That becomes a normal embedded thing. Your expectation then, and the, and the staff member's expectation is that that's what is going to happen. And then guess what? It's going to happen more often than not. Instead, what even happened, I think when we had one of, the, one of the staff members, after I told them that, and we practiced it a little bit, then the next question was, yeah, but what happens if they object on price? It's so embedded in our staff to be so frustrated, so freaked out about that and worried about it that they can't focus on practicing things. And I compared it, for those of you who weren't there, I compared it to when you're training in martial arts. And if you were training in martial arts and you were trying to punch the bag and somebody was punching you in the face at the same time all the time, you couldn't practice your technique, right? I mean, you, there's no way for you to practice the movement and, and drills that you were going to do if somebody is punching you in the face all the time. Later in your training, you would probably want to practice when there was some more intensity happening, when somebody was hitting you and stuff was going on and you'd want to free spar. But when you're initially learning something, you can't practice that way. You can't practice under the stressful conditions. So it's the same exact kind of training. And so that was a really good thing, a good takeaway to have is the primary part of your training always has to be, whether it's your phone script or your uh, or, or your intro uh, closing or your uh, your renewal closing, any of those has to be massive training on everything going fine before you're allowed to train on objection overcoming. And what I mostly find and what I'm guessing in most of your cases is you almost always just start as if the objections are going to be the base training, like your first training. And think about it when you're training. One is not enough role playing, but then when the role playing comes up, it's always about, okay, when they say it's too expensive or when they say they got to think about it, this is what you do. You're not, you shouldn't be doing that. You should be training on if everything goes fine a lot, and then people will be much less sensitized to that's their expectation. And then the enrollments will go and the renewals will go much better. So your staff won't push back as much if that's not what they're freaked out about. Okay, so that was kind of my takeaways from what I got out of the training and when talking to people. So what questions you guys have from that or anything else, those of you who didn't go, from what we've covered today so far? Because we kind of covered a lot of ground and there might be some other stuff that, that came up from that. Or we covered everything so perfectly that you... Okay, I'll jump yeah. in. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this was uh, uh, just specific... Uh, was regard uh, regarding uh, uh, raising your gross. Um, so I was yeah. just saying, what if you're doing all your renewals, um, you're following the process, parents come in, they love it, everything is going smooth, they sign, they, they follow, they're paying the new price point, everything is going smooth, but nobody's paying in full. That it's just a trend of the, the influx of, of people coming in. They love the program, they're doing it, but they're just, are there any other incentives it, other other than offering 20 to 25%? Is there anything else you do differently? 
I would say my first assessment of that would be uh, how frequently you're, where are you asking them and how are you asking them? And the first mm -hmm. thing I would do is diagnose what that process is and whether or not it's following a good process. Grandmaster Smith did a really nice, uh, uh, we have a video of him doing it at Master Oliver's house uh, where he did kind of went through the process of asking for paid in folds. And then I took that and scripted it into a PowerPoint. So that's on the Facebook group uh, on how to ask okay. for polls. The first thing I would do is review that. The second piece of that I would do is, are, is it happening on a regular basis as a matter of course? One of the things that I think gets a little bit lost in our pay in full contest that we do at the end of the year, which you did a great job of, by the way, Chris, you were our winner. That's why we went to dinner. Chris won the contest. Yes. If everybody didn't know because he had one hundred and sixty thousand dollars December. Uh, mm -hmm. So great job, Chris. Uh, Thank you. But one of the things that I think people get lost in those contests that we do. And when we do it during the blitz and we do it at a certain time, and sometimes people do it during tax time is that it should be a regular matter of course every month to identify the people with a high balance that are your targets that aren't ready for a different renewal. They aren't ready to renew into something else and then ask X number of people. And we tend to, you know, in my school, we ask uh, five people a month and we expect to get one or two paid in full. So that, that's kind of our target number. And you should have an expectation every single month that that's just part of your normal process. Just like we want to get so many new members, we want to get so many renewals, and we want to get you know one or two paid in fulls. And yes. and those could come in terms of one you know big thirty five thousand dollar one, or it could be a couple partial ones, or it could be whatever. And we want to make up that number. That's our goal. So that's built into our goal sheet as far as we want to make this much money per month, and so much money is going to be made up of paid in fulls. Yes. Um, we call that compressions. And so we put that in our target. So just make that part of your target at the beginning of the month. You know how many you have to ask. And the, the thing about paid in fulls is it seems like such a big thing for everybody. Oh, it's a big thing. But in reality, it's the easiest sale we have in the school. All the other sales require an emotional component. You know, they've got to emotionally want self-discipline for their kids. They got to emotionally want to get their black belt and, and you know, the, all the things that that entails. And I'm not meaning to be de degrading about that or anything, but it's like there's this emotional big deal about it. And it's wonderful and it's amazing and it's great. But the paid in full, all it is, is you want to save the money or not. It's a better deal for you. It's you want to save the money. And I, I, I've had, I've had, um, I've had like 16 year olds do these. No problem. When I do seminars for people, you know, I have people that have never done sales before and they do the script and they can do it just fine. It's a very, very easy um, sale. The, the big thing is, is just every month we make it part of our process. And, and that way, when it's the blitz time or a, a special time, it's not a big stress. Yes. So that's the thing I think that might be number one, are you following the process? Grandmaster Smith outlined it really well. It's pretty well documented. Number two, is it a normal part of every month? And again, for everybody, it shouldn't be like we don't do any for six months and then we do a bunch of them and we don't do yes. any for six months and then we do like a bunch of them. That, that That's weird to me. Does that Agreed. help, Chris? Yes, it does. And I think uh, that's the transition we're going through is, <coughs> excuse me, we're not following Master Smith's formula because we're just learning we're just we're new to the group so we're just adopting things and um you know we've always done the traditional approach where you know uh let's say we're doing a renewal for leadership you know this is this is down and this is monthly or you can save money right now by saving 20 percent, just offering both options either the monthly or the single payment I, yeah at I one would, time yeah i would never do that i i don't like that approach personally i don't think master smith likes it either the reason i don't like that approach is it tend i think you're going to lower your renewal conversion rate um, I think you're going to lower your renewal conversion rate for two reasons. One is when you do that, see, I, I would, it does two bad things. One is when I'm, when I'm ever doing a sale in this business, I only want, this is really important for everybody and you may be presenting price wrong. Um, I'm, I'm, I want to present initial and first month. I don't want to discuss the term. I don't want to discuss how many months they're doing this. I've already discussed it. 
because we're setting a goal for black belt or we're setting a goal for a quarter of the way to black belt in the enrollment. I've already discussed it, but at the moment I'm talking about money, I only want to talk about the initial in the first month. And, and if I was going to talk about the paid in full, that has to be including, you know, how many months they're doing it for, because it's going to be like $4,000 for the, you know, enrollment and like $40,000 for the uh, paid in full for the, for the, uh, uh, for the, for the renewal. So if I include the paid in full, I have to simultaneously talk about the term. So I don't want to do that because it's not because I'm trying to be manipulative. I just don't want people to have to conceive of too many things at once and make too many decisions. I only want them to have to worry about, can I, can I afford and pay for the initial of the first month? So they only have to- Can, can I say month. it a different way? Uh, See, it makes let, perfect let me sense. finish the second thing I was going to say and then, then say it a different way. The second thing I was going to that, that I don't like to do is I don't like to present the paid in full simultaneously with the initial in the first month because very, very frequently you're going to get this objection. You're going to get the objection that, oh, the paid in full sounds really good. I really would like to do that. But since it's $25,000 or $30,000, I've got to go home and check my finance, you know, now, and that's a legitimate concern because generally people don't have, you know, $35,000. If you're charging real money, they don't have $35,000. They're just going to write a check or give you a hand, you full, a bag full of money for. Yes. So, so, so there's two reasons why that backfires to show them those two things at the same time. Yeah, no, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Now, Master Smith, you, you had a, a, a different way to say that. Yes. Okay. See, we we uh, concluded a long time ago exactly what Master Moody said. When you give them two choices, you can only confuse them. If you just close them, see, I'm trying to close them on a big sale. But it's not a big sale. It's just a little down payment and one monthly payment. Yes. So I've got to sell them and close them on the small number. I don't ever, I don't, if you, you've bought houses, Chris, when you buy yes, a house and when they do that amortization sheet and they pull out there and you realize that you're paying a million for this house, but it's going to cost you 3 million or whatever. You go, what the hell? Yeah. Are they just give you the monthly, the month. Can you afford the monthly rate? That's see easy. I close them now. All of my staff, you know, when you do multi-schools, it's much easier to train them to do that than to try to convince them to do a paid in full, even by give them a big discount or whatever, because it's not the discount that's going to matter to them at that point. It's that big number they see, because they're going to have to see that big number to figure out what they're going to have to pay to get that 20% discount, right? Yes. So I get the best of both worlds. One I close them on one simple close with small numbers. And then I come back to them when I see that they're engaged. Now, I don't talk to every single student in the school. I'm just like Master Moody. Every month, I gave my schools a limit on only five people they could talk to. I didn't let them talk to everybody because they screw it up. <laughs> but they have only five people to present to. So don't screw it up. Don't waste it. What do you have to do before you've got to go through your list of all your accounts and pick the top five, the ones you think are the best bet to do it because you only get five shots at it. And they started getting really good. You know, sometimes they'd close three or four of them, sometimes one or two, but they always got somebody. But the way you approach them is what the key is. But before you approach them, you have to have already pre-framed them extra. I have to have spotlighted that kid. I've got this kid. Uh, uh, maybe I gave him something extra, water bottle, backpack, or some, you know, something that was, uh, you know, above. Uh, you know how Master Oliver likes to send out cookies and chocolates or flowers or that kind of, you know, I'll try to do something special for that kid. These ones that we're going to, I call them court them. You know, I mean, you're going to try to ask them for something. So let's make sure we prep them a little bit. 
Number one, let's make sure they're really liking it. Let's make sure the parents are really liking the program. Let's make sure that uh, we've evaluated the kids. Uh, is he coming to class? Well, if he just renewed, we know he should be pretty excited, right? And uh, did he get all his gear and everything? Make sure there's no hiccups in the system there before we approach them. Now we can approach them. They might have renewed six months ago. It didn't matter. As long as I take the top five that are most excited about the program, that are coming consistently, that like the program. So the selecting the five is just as important as talking to the five and how you talk to those five. Don't call them, don't send them an email, don't text them. I do it just, just like accidentally. They're walking in, I know they're on my list. I'm gonna say hi to them. If it's a dad, I'm gonna talk maybe of some sports thing. If it's a mom, I might talk about their kid or a testing date or the weather or something, you know? Some just what I call small talk. So you make a little greeting and a little small talk and then you go, oh, by the way, I got a quick question for you. When we did your uh, leadership enrollment, uh, did I go over the different payment options that could save you up to $4,000 and you could still make monthly payments? They go like, no, I, you never told me that. Now they're all like biting at the bit to want to hear it. And then I say, I always preface it with this. You got a minute? Yeah, come on in the office. Sometimes they've told me, no, I'm actually picking up my kid. I've got to go pick up my other kid. No problem. When are you coming in again? And then I set up an appointment with them. So I can go over the different payment options that they could save up to. Now notice how I said that. I didn't say they could save $4,000. I said they could save up to $4,000. And then what was the little icing I put on that cake? Did you catch it, Chris? You're muted. You're muted. I guess not. Okay, tell them somebody. And still make monthly payments. Ah! Oh, and still make monthly payments, correct. Oh, look, you missed that. You missed the icing on the cake. How good that going to be? You follow me? Yes, sir. And you can still make monthly payments. You know why I said that? Because half the people, when I said the, the other way without the icing on it, they said, uh, I can't do that right now. But when I say you could still make monthly payments, whoa, I want to hear about this. Just like you want to hear about this right now, don't you? You're still muted. Yes, sir. Because you don't know what the hell I'm talking about. But guess what? They can put that on a card. They can split it between two or three cards. They can put it out of their, their uh, savings account. They, can, they might have it uh, in a, a low interest bearing account that this is gonna save them a lot more. You follow me? Now, yes, sir. And, yes, when sir. I say up to, now when I pull this paper out, and most of you have seen it, what does it look like, Steve, that paper? Watch, he's going to pull it right up for you because he knows exactly what I'm talking about. Yana, you seen that paper? Did you find it? I didn't find it, sir. But it's, but it's the, it's the um, on the top is the, the regular monthly payment. Barb's going to get it. On top is the, I use the last one. Uh, the, on top is the regular payment plan that they're on now. Then there's the 90 payoff in 90 days. And then on the bottom is the, the complete, the complete one. Oh, there's one. Somebody's holding one up. Okay. Look uh, at that paper seat. right there. And uh, Bob, can you do a, can you make her co-host so she can do a screen share? Would somebody be able to put a picture of that in the group? Oh yeah. It's in there. Oh, it's great. been put in the, the Facebook a hundred times. Yes, sir. Uh, Bob, did you make her co-host? You good to go now. Okay, Karis, can you do? Uh, oh, Karis, I thought we were doing uh, Barbara Stephen. Hold on. Oh, wait, oh. somebody's got one. You, can you do a screen share? Uh, Karis, you know how to do a screen share? She's got it in her hand, though. I have it up on the uh, Facebook. Uh, yeah, I'm holding it up. It's not on a screen. 
I can okay. do it on Facebook. Can you pull it up, Jeff? Oh, there we go. Just, just uh, hold it up there for look. There we go. There we go. Now, can you see that, Chris? So now I sit down with them. I say, uh, uh, Mrs. Jones, and uh, we've only got 10 minutes, so I'm going to actually do this in five. I say, now, Mrs. Jones, because uh, she's interested in how she could still make monthly payments and save five, th 4000 right? So I'm going to say, uh, now, remember when you signed up, uh, uh, you did plan number one. Now, I don't write the initial investment there. On that line, I just say that they were paying whatever their monthly payment was. I got it. Uh, Karis, can you mute? There you go. Um, I just tell them that that's what their monthly payment is, right? And I said, so right now you're paying this monthly. Uh, on our, That's our number one. That's the one we went over with you. Uh, we were a little uh, busy that day, so I don't think he had time to go over number two and number three payment plans. Number two is oh. called our 90-day payment plan. And on that one, you normally receive a 5% discount. And I say, but with our special bonus interest rebate discount, whatever word you want to use, you cross that five out and you write above it a 10%. But this month we're doing a special da da da. So you're going to actually get a 10% discount on that. So that would save you. Now I know how much ahead of time they're going to save. That's why I said you could save up to 4,000 because I knew they were going to say they could save $4,132 if they paid it in full. So that means that if they do it in 90 days, they're going to get a 10% discount. So that means they're going to get half of what the other discount I just told them up to, right? So if I told them 4,000, then I'm going to tell them, this one would save you about $2,000 by paying off that balance over the next 90 days. And then the third one, and I write a three and circle it, I say, that's the paid in full, and that would save you about $4,000. And I'd write that on the additional savings line. Notice I haven't given them the exact figure yet, right? Yes, sir, yes. Now I say, would either one of those work for you? Pardon me, do you, do you cross out the 10% and say, and say, 20? yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. On that one, I'll say, and that one normally is 10%, but with our special da, 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 whatever we're doing this month, mm -hmm. you actually get 20%. Yes. And that would save you. I go to that savings line and I write it. That would save you about 4,000. Would either one of those work for you? And 99% of the time, they're going to give me a real definitive answer. It's going to be either no or yes, but it's going to be one or two of those, right? I'd rather say, does either one of those work for you rather than just give them a paid in full and have them say yes or no? Because Makes I don't sense. care which one they pick. It's going to be a home run for me. You follow Understood. me? Understood. Yes, now sir. they're going to say, let's say they say, well, uh, I don't know. They use This is common. Because that's why we ask five, because maybe one pays in full and the other uh, three of them do a 90 day. Well, I'm just as happy because I only had to give a 10% discount. I know I'm going to collect all of that money. So I save $2,000, right? But uh, when they say that one, then I'll divide that one out and I'll say, okay, well, I then without them seeing it, I already have it written out, but I'll go through and I'll say, whatever their number of savings is at 10% discount, I'll divide that by four. And then I'll say on that line, so what you would do is you would put a fourth down, which would be, and then I'll say $1,200, or uh, I'm sorry, that might be $5,000 or 7,000. And then, and I put a times, and then three more payments of the same. I don't write it again. I say, and then three more payments over the next 90 days. So I only write that one smaller number. That's a fourth as large as this last one I'm going to do, right? Yes, sir. And then they say, well, yeah, I could do that. Sometimes I'll do that and they'll say, oh, okay, well, how much would that one be? Well, if I do that one, then I take the total. 
I don't let them see the total, take off the 20% and then just give them whatever that number is going to be and say, well, if you did it in full, it would be this amount. But remember, and don't ever tell anybody what to do. So don't, don't say you could do this or you should do this. What I tell them is what a lot of the parents do is they'll take and split that over a few of their cards and then pay their card back over the 90 days. And that way they don't have any interest on it at all. They go, oh, well, now you get more maximize more savings. So you give them a, a few options, right? Now, that keeps it real simple, no problem. They're gonna do one or two, and I don't have to catch all five of them if I catch two or three of them, but some months you'll catch all five and you'll end up with a record month because you had all these paid in fulls when you just ask five people this simple. But I didn't cost me any, you can take that uh, share off, thanks, Bob. Uh, we didn't take anybody's, uh, uh, you know, stop anybody from renewing. I didn't mess up the renewal conference. I make that conference go smooth, get them all their stuff, get them in the class, make sure the next couple of weeks I get to spotlight them and make sure I'm treating them like an egg and making sure they're getting, they're, they're catching on to this new renewal stuff like awesome and they're super ex excited and happy because I'm going to tell you, you know who's not going to pay in full? The one who's might not think their kid is going to finish. Even though they signed a contract, they're, gonna, they're thinking in their mind, well, if he's not doing it, I ain't paying. Those are the ones you don't want to pay in full. The, the ones that want to pay in full are the ones whose kids are so excited about this, they know they're going to do it, so they might as well get the savings. Okay? That yes, helped. sir. That was fantastic. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. And remember we recorded hey, sir, this. just a quick question. Uh, uh, well, I, let me let me let me mention one thing about that though, Gustavo. Before we go on, uh, and all that's all that is uh, scripted. Pretty much everything Grandmaster Smith said, and all the rebuttals or all the the objection overcoming is scripted in that PowerPoint. So you've got a lot of content in that uh, that that you can look up, Chris, and for everybody if you want to follow up with that. So and Master, thank you, did, you, did you have one? That was question: uh, Do do we put do we actually put what the discount was at the 5% and the 10% and then cross that out? Oh, no, no, no. I just put 5%, but then I cross 5% out. Got it. I don't write but, the number. That, yeah, that's I what I was doing. doing. Okay, I just want to make sure. Five, I say, and it's normally 5%, but with our special, da, 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 if you do it this month, why? Because I want them to do it this month. Now, I don't tell them if you do it today. These are my parents that are going to be there. I just want them to know that it's something we're running this month. So if they do it this month and instead of that discount, they get that. And instead of 10, I cross it out, they get that. But this is the only time they get that. See, I want them to know the regular is five and 10. So they don't say, oh, can I do that next month? Can I do that in four months? Yes, but it won't be the 20. It'll be the 10. It'll be the five. You follow me? That that creates the urgency like uh, Master Moody talks about you. You to make sure you can give them a little bit of a push, you've got to create a sense of urgency of why they have to do it now. Yeah. Does that make sense? And Master Moody, did you have one where they put a large chunk down, but then they still do have monthly payments for a period of time? I thought that was- uh, what We do, but I didn't get into that because I okay. kept it simple. Okay, yeah, so that's, that's a different that's in, the, that's in the PowerPoint, so you, it'll, be, it'll clarify there how to do that. Okay, thank uh, you. If, so, if you try to, uh, the first time you hear this, if you try to go, I have a couple more options I do off of that to get, to bump the cash up, you know, to get a little more. Uh, but this is, that's a simplified way. And if you just did it that way and you didn't, now when you get good at that, you want that extra, that third strike, I call it three strikes, right? Just like baseball, three strikes and he's out. So even though he gave you two strikes, you still got one more shot at him. But uh, get that one down, and then I'll give you that third strike. Okay, thank you. Or you go to the PowerPoint and see it, or go to the uh, the one that I did in uh, in Breckenridge. Or it actually wasn't in Breckenridge; it was in um, oh, the Stanley. Where is that? Was it day three of September twenty-two? No, it well, where was uh, East where Hill. was 
where was the Stanley? What's that area called? It's not Keystone. That was, Key, not, not Keystone. Uh, that was Estes Park, sir. Estes, Estes Park. Park, yeah. It was the meeting in Estes Park. And I, I think it was, uh, I think it might even have been before the pandemic that, that night in 2019, uh, Jeff. But they're, uh, you know, they're in, in our, don't forget, guys, you guys have access to all the meetings we ever did, like you were just at, that you can go through. And there's all kinds of stuff that when you see it again, and you'll go, wow, I didn't realize that was there. I, or I was there, and I didn't even realize they said that now. And now you hear it again. And now you're more ready because you're more advanced. You can go back and get more out of that information than you did when you were first there. You got it, Mr. Bob? Yeah, so I was just sharing where all the live meetings uh, that we do record, we don't record all of them, um, but the ones we do record, we post up here into the member site, martialartswealthmember.com. Everybody know where that is and know how to get there? I know how to get there. How do we know which one is going to have that in you it? You got to go through it and scan through it. It'll tell you what's, what's in there when you scan it. Okay. But uh, I'll tell you, if you go find the one at Estes Park, and we've only done a couple at Estes Park, uh, that's where I did the paid in full, the, the long version. Because Master Moody did it, you actually did it, and then I did a, a, a second variation. So uh -huh. they got two, two, two choices on it. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of content there on how to do it and role playing through it. So, so we've got a- we've done, it, we've done it several times at other places. Yeah. Just know for sure there. Thank you. Okay, guys, I think we did pretty good, Master Moody. Uh, yep. If Jeff wouldn't ask that last question, we'd have been finished right on time. So tell I'll, Master I'll Oliver it was Jeff's fault, okay? So I have a quick question for him. You know, maybe something we can go over next time. Um, and I believe um, I got this from Ms. Karras. I'm not sure. But just parent orientation nights, you know, it was something that was mentioned a couple weeks back that I thought was a really awesome idea but I'm not quite sure how to implement those parent um, orientation nights. So I'm just trying to you know, maybe get a little bit more clarification, a little bit more details on how to make that work effectively. Was that you, Karish, or was that Jan? Yeah, uh, I think okay, Jan. I was gonna say, it might've been Ms. Jan, like I said, I'm not quite sure. I don't think it was me. Gotcha. I don't, that. that we had a parent orientation at school that, that they were doing at the public schools. Okay, because we had who was doing the parent orientation for their new, like their new students for all of their uh, new students. Ask that, that ask that next week when everybody's here because everybody hopped off. Oh yes, sir. <laughs> okay, thanks guys. Thanks, Master Rudy, Master Bob. Thanks, Jason. All right, we'll see you guys later. Okay, see you. Take care.